intellectual property creation and management for emerging growth technology companies. Motivating intellectual property performance. This presentation is brought to you by the IP attorneys and professionals at Halsey Intellectual Property Lawyers through the Halsey Intellectual Property Technology and Invention Monitor website. Halsey Intellectual Property Lawyers. IP professionals for entrepreneurship's new golden age. This presentation is part of the Technology and Invention Monitor website's Legal and Business Issues and Instructions resource. Intellectual property creation and management for emerging growth technology companies. Motivating intellectual property performance. Let's begin the presentation. One of the more difficult aspects of creating an intellectual property portfolio. That is the motivation of intellectual property performance. I know from my experience of about 18 years of being in the intellectual property business that there, within an organization there are conflicting views of the value of intellectual property rights and the motivations for doing so. On the one hand, you may find many inventors who are convinced that all information should be free and any attempt to secure possessive or property rights relating to innovation and technology is antithetical to their philosophy of the freedom of information. On the other hand, you may find inventors who are not interested in sharing their creative abilities with the organization with the understanding that they get paid to do specific things and those specific things or what they'll do and anything beyond that is above and beyond the call of duty for a particular job. On the other hand, you may find an organization where an engineer is a prolific inventor and can only uh, be fettered by his desire to invent by the requirement that he be on task and focused within the organization to solve the particular engineering problems that the company faces. Who loves technology? A friend of mine uh, is a former CEO of a technology company and a phrase that she likes to use is wallowing in technology. And that's a phrase that I think relates to the interest of many engineers to be fascinated about a particular technology endeavor and not focusing on the particular needs of a company when it relates to technology innovation. And that can have its own value. And then you may find others for whom there is the need to provide them with a defined system that takes their creative efforts and with an understanding that those creative efforts have value as they do in and of themselves that there have that there should be some type of recognition for the contributions that they're making beyond the obligations and their fulfillment of the obligations to be at work from 8 to 6 or 9 to 5 or whatever in between there may be with those obligations and there needs to be a system to support that so this this module deals with some of the practical aspects and gives an example of one company that has created some processes. They're not particularly different from others, but at least they do show it a good example and show some of the results that come from the example of a way to implement or incentivize or promote within the organization inventive activities on the part of engineers and scientists and inventors of the company. So that's what this module five deals with. Thereafter, we'll deal with the management of the results of these types of efforts and then how we take these portfolios that come from the management efforts and then turn them into financial results for the company. So in Module 5, we'll talk about the practice of using incentives to make the sure that the scientists and engineers within the company are as incented as they can possibly be within the, finan the financial restrictions that a company experiences to create, help facilitate the creation of creative works, such as new software, such as new creative works, particularly new patented inventions or patentable inventions. And we'll use, as we have in this technology series, a focus on the patented technology 
But this also relates to trademark. This also relates to trade secrets. And this further relates to copyright works as well. One thing that's necessary before we can begin the institution of incentives or the use of incentives is the creation of an environment. This is sort of the soft stuff that relates to the creation of an intellectual property portfolio. There needs to be within the organization at the highest level of management a commitment to the generation of new ideas and the recognition of new ideas. Patents come from these new ideas and the culture that promotes these is one where there's periodic motivation and training of employees to use their personal attributes, to use their unique abilities and people, each one of us has a unique ability and those in the engineering professions, in the scientific professions, have unique abilities that relate to their ability to solve problems and see and, and create new solutions to technological problems. And the culture that recognizes these unique abilities, these personal attributes, is the one that will, at the end of the day, create and maintain the more positive and more beneficial portfolio. So there needs to be an organization that creates for the engineers a place where there's fun to go to work. It's a good, positive attitude where there's the expectation that they will, in fact, create new ideas and that these new ideas will have value. Not all ideas are good ones, but there's the expectation that they come up with good, new ideas, and ideas just in general that may be good or bad depending on the circumstances. That there's an awareness of the contribution that these engineers and these scientists and these innovators are making. And that there's something further that relates to the subconscious. I don't know how many times I have in my life come up with some of the best ideas that I've come across either while driving, thinking about something else, taking a shower, mowing the lawn, whatever it may happen to be, but some of the best ideas are, are in that time between being asleep and waking up in the morning. Some tremendous ideas, the use of the subconscious and training and use of the subconscious to come up with new and innovative ideas. These are the types of things that an organization that seeks to create new ideas can promote an awareness and appreciation of the subconscious and one that in internalizes praise and reward for the organization, where patents of an organization are put on the walls of the corporation's lobby, where there are rewards, not only financial, but also professional awards, uh, such as letters in a person's uh, employment history file. Or there are news announcements that the company just received a patent and Inventor A and Inventor B are the leaders of this technology, that this be made known to the public. It's amazing what a press release recognizing two individuals in a corporation can do when a new patent is issued to their benefit. And this is where external praise, such as press releases, such as, uh, such as parties, such as uh, t-shirts, and uh, different types of things can be very valuable that uh, show to the individual the appreciation for the inventive and the creative work that they're doing. So there's an example of a company, IBM, again, we've used that a number of times in this course, and I think they are front and center, the lead organization that has more than many others weathered the storm of the dot-com, telecom, technology, economic downturn. One of the contributing factors, I think many people who look at the company would say has allowed IBM to weather the storm, has been their ability to create, to innovate. And look at the results we have achieved here. In patent growth from 1987, IBM received 595 patents, which at that time was, an, was not an, in, an inconsequential number. But last year, they received close to 3,500 patents. And in terms of licensing revenue for the innovations and products that they've created, in an earlier slide, I showed you that in 1999, they received $762 million in licensing revenue. Well, last year, it met the stated objective of $2.3 billion in licensing revenue for the portfolio that they have. IBM clearly has one of the strongest patent portfolios 
in the business, and I think it's one that is important to recognize that they've done a lot of things right in the creation of their portfolio, one of which has been the creation of an incentives program that's linked the payments of the incentives to their inventors to the licensing value that the corporation has achieved by licensing their patent. It's provided a program of incentives to inventors to support the process of harvesting the inventions, harvesting the creative work of the scientists and inventors and creative contributors to IBM. It's balanced its program between teamwork and individuals. I don't know of a lot of programs that do this, but one of the key aspects of a program that seems to work best is one that not only recognizes the individual contributions of leading inventors or, or for novel concepts, but those who contribute by virtue of solving a significant problem or at the same time for generating new products and the patents that relate to that effort. IBM, as many companies do, provides a patent filing award. It also provides a patent issue award. It provides a supplemental patent issue award and a division patent portfolio award, and it further provides a patent team award. Patent issue award is one not different from many companies. It's $500 per inventor for a maximum of $2,000 per patent. That means if there are, four, if there are more than four inventors, the $2,000 would be split among them. The award is received when the patent issues. The patent filing uh, award is typically $1,000 per inventor or $2,500 per patent. It may change from time to time. And all of these numbers may change from time to time, but the understanding is that at each one of these milestone events in the creation of a portfolio, there's some recognition for the contribution that the inventors make. A patent issue award is also provides a plaque for the first three patents that the inventor achieves, and thereafter the inventor may, his or her own choosing, take some of this money that he receives and create his own plaque or have his own plaque made. There are many services that provide this type of service. There's a supplemental patent issue award that's $1,000 per inventor with a maximum of $4,000 per patent for the top 20 to 25 percent of the total patents. This patent can also, this supplemental award can also be at the higher level of $4,500 per inventor for a maximum of $18,000 per patent for the top 5% of total patents. So this is a further, these are, these are very significant patents to the company and these patents are recognized by virtue of their contribution. The division patent portfolio is one where they can, uh, a division may receive as much as $2,500 to $25,000 per inventor per division and it's one that uh, is controlled at the division level. The award is based on the actual licensing value of a particular patent or set of patents, and it's a stepping stone toward the corporate award, which we'll talk about in a second. Moreover, as with many of these discretionary awards, and it is a discretionary award, it's not required to be given each year. Then we start moving to the corporate patent portfolio award. Remember, IBM is not a small company. And these decisions are made on an annual basis and taken uh, to heart by all in the company, as you can see by the portfolio that the company has developed over the last 10 or more years. There's no preset limit to this amount. The award money is based on the actual licensing value. And receiving a portfolio licensing revenue of $2.3 billion, as the company has, I think gives it considerable leeway in determining how these inventive contributions of the inventors and scientists of the company can and, and, and will be appropriately awarded. The nomination is based on a, a by-division basis on use in the licensing. In other words, if a patent is used in a particular technology, it's attributed to the particular the division from which the patent came and the final award is determined by the Corporate Intellectual Property Law Division. In other words, the patent attorneys and agents who are responsible for 
the collection and enforcement of these patent rights, the collection of revenues associated with the, with the enforcement of these patent rights through licensing negotiations and licensing agreements are the ones that dictate or that would control who receives these contributions, uh, these, these payments from the corporation for their inventive contributions. Then there's the division award, which is a separate division award. And the award recognizes any member of the patent team who makes an exceptional contribution to the value of a patent. And so with that, this is more of a discretionary award. It may or may not be an inventor who receives this award. In other words, there may be a uh, machinist or there may be some other contributor who by law can't necessarily be a named inventor of a patent, but for whom a significant contribution has been made that allowed an invention to arise or facilitated the licensing of a particular patent. And as a result of that, there's a contribution uh, there's a return to that individual or set of individuals who've made that corporate contribution. The only reason that I provide this IBM example is one, that it is an example. Uh, I can't, I'm, I don't represent IBM personally, so I can't tell you whether this is the program that they continue to use, nor do I represent that this is exactly the type of program that an organization should or could use for the incentivization or uh, promotion of an intellectual property program. But I can tell you one thing, is that it's a complicated system that considers a lot of the contribution that goes in the development of a patent portfolio. And I think the results in the numbers of patents, almost increasing by eight or ninefold since 10 years or so ago, and increasing by as much as four or five fold in licensing revenue speaks for itself as a demonstrative tool for taking these intellectual property rights and turning them into the financial results of the company. So in summary, this module five talked about the establishment of the, we talked about the establishing of an IP culture, one that promotes the creative activities of a company. And remember, this is, this is the responsibility, not of the engineers, but those who manage the engineers and those who manage the managers of the engineers within an organization. And the promotion of a structure such as the IBM incentive program that allows for and supports continued involvement on the part of those who are inventors and who are assigning their rights to IBM of uh, the creative works that they are making for the benefit of the company. In module six, we'll begin to look at the management principles, the management considerations with regard to an intellectual property portfolio that takes the results of programs such as we've discussed in module five and starts to analyze where the satisfaction of the corporate challenges in creating an IP portfolio and incentivizing the, I, the creation of such a portfolio are used where these management structures are used for the purpose of making sure that this harvest is most effectively and most profitably used for the benefit of the organization. This concludes the presentation. Thank you for viewing Intellectual Property Creation and Management for Emerging Growth Technology Companies. Motivating Intellectual Property Performance. Be sure to visit us at www.halseyiplaw.com. Halsey Intellectual Property Lawyers. IP Professionals for Entrepreneurship's New Golden Age. This is Bill Halsey.